Hey guys, it's BMB, and in this video we will continue with the second part of our previous project, which is how to increase the digital inputs and outputs of your Arduino board. So if you missed the first part of it, just click on the video displayed on the screen to watch it. Last time we stopped at the PCB ordering from EasyEDA, and they mentioned that it will take about 4-6 to six days to deliver the PCB. And they did it successfully because after 6 days only, I received the package from EasyEDA, and the biggest surprise is when I opened it, I got 6 PCBs, that means they sent an extra one for free. But what was really amazing is the high quality making of the PCBs. Actually, such a thing was expected from a professional community like the EZDA. Now let's prepare our components for the assemble, so we will use 4 IC sockets, where we will place 4 shift registers, and we will need 16 diodes, some resistors, an LED, a DIP connector, and for sure the PCB. So now we're ready, let's start soldering the components. After soldering the components, we need to place the shift registers on the IC sockets. Now we have everything in place, let's power the module using the BCC and Giant D from our Arduino. Ok, there is a good sign out there, the power LED is already on, so we are sure that the power supply is well distributed on the module. The next step is connecting the module to the Arduino port. After connecting the IO extension module to our Arduino board, we need to prepare the source code. So I run the Arduino IDE and I have the IO extension library already installed. 
and you can get it from the GitHub link that you will find in the description of this video. We open the Blink example provided by the imported library and it will allow us to blink the fifth pin of our module. And as you see in this example, we just used a simple functions just like digital read and digital write of the Arduino APIs. Now let's add an LED to our circuit and we will connect it to the pin number 5 of our extension module. Now we need to compile and upload the code. And here we are, the LED starts blinking, so our output branch operates correctly. Now let's move to the input connector to test it. And to do this, I placed a push button on the 12th pin of the input connector. Now let's get back to the source code and read the input pin using the digital read function and make a test on it. So if the input value is equal to high, then light up the LED. Else, turn the LED off. Compile and upload. As you can see here, when I click on the push button, the LED turns on, and when I release it, the LED turns off. So guys, it was a real useful project, especially for me, because I often use a lot of digital IO pins. And this project could be a solution for a lot of your friends, so do not hesitate to share this project with them. That's it for today. Just one last thing, make sure that you are doing electronics every day. It was BNB from Megadas. See you next time.